women have always been significant in our nation and in across the globe, really. Leanne Goff and uh, the Heart of God has a has a special place for women. Uh, significant women. One that comes to mind is Mother, the Mary of uh, Mother of Christ. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. I say that right? Mary, Mary the, the mother, mother of, of Christ. Christ. <laughs> uh, significant women throughout yeah, the history absolutely. of uh, Scripture. Yeah. Uh, but there is an attempt by, I think, by the enemy to silence yeah, women because they are so significant in absolutely. the eyes of God. Absolutely. And what we see, Gordon, a lot is women that just carry so much shame and guilt and embarrassment because of just um, major events that have taken place in their lives. Even this last weekend in our conference, uh, there was one gal I really felt that I was I didn't know her but just lift that veil of shame off of her and and she gave testimony the, the next day of how she just felt it totally removed and I think that 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 silenced us because we're embarrassed and we don't we really don't know uh, who we are and whose we are so we don't know how to fulfill what God has created us to fulfill I might be a little bit politically incorrect uh, but the the Islam faith is uh, one that comes to mind uh, uh, an incredible oppression against women. Yeah. And we talk about lifting the veil. My Lord, we're talking literally yeah. lifting the veil. Absolutely. Uh, I believe you minister to those women, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, I have done several uh, women's conferences in Pakistan. I love the women in these Sestan nations. Um, and I have, I, I really feel that God's given me an opportunity to not only go and lift their veil spiritually, but actually lift the veil off of these women um, in these Istan nations that literally wear a veil over their face. And I, I, I get into rooms where it's comfortable and it's the right setting for them to remove their burqas and their veils. And I look at them, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're absolutely beautiful. You're so beautiful. And you know, the thing is, is that they sit, they, I have worn a, a burqa before because I wanted to experience what do they feel like when only their eyes are showing. And I can stand there and I can tell people, I can see you, but you can't see me. You have an entity, identity and I don't. And so these women, literally their identity is hidden and they don't even have a voice. And, and so many of them carry so much of, of the heart of God, but they don't have a way to really express it and let it go. You know, I'm just struck with how profound that really is. And I suspect that a lot of our listeners uh, might be getting a, a new picture of uh, that kind of oppression. Yeah. Uh, and in America, we don't see that on the same level that no. these uh, other nations do. No, we don't. Uh, for our ladies, um, it's a spiritual veil, and it really is just as powerful to keeping women silent as the, 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 the literal veil of a burqa. But when I'm with these women in these, um, <clears throat> these Istan nations, you know, these Muslim nations, my heart just, I, I mean, I can be with a thousand in a conference, and I'm trying to minister to all of them, these whole thousand. And really what it is, it, it's, it, it's, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Yes, it does. And it says that great glorious light overcomes darkness. And so, you know, people are like, how can you go in these nations? And I'm like, well, because I carry the light. I'm not afraid of darkness. Light is greater than darkness and love overcomes fear. And that's our two main instruments as we go into these nations to release the veil off of the women. And it's, it's a delicate situation though. It's not your typical what you do here. You really have to be as wise as a serpent and meek as a dove as you go in these situations. Well, one little light can dispel a lot of darkness. Absolutely, look at here. <laughs> yes, yeah, we've got lights until the cows come home yeah. in this studio. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that when you go to these encounters uh, that you have around the country, around the world, yeah. women are set free. Yeah. And yeah. that is the heart of yeah. the Father, isn't it? Absolutely, a free woman will set women free. And a free woman will deliver men from oppression. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, some some guys might be too macho to receive ministry from a woman mm -hmm. or think they shouldn't be in the pulpit or yeah. think they shouldn't be in ministry. Yeah. Uh, I want to say bring it on. Yeah, we sat at lunch with a couple yesterday and this man was running the sound in our conference for us and he was there for every single session and he said, when you come back, we're going to come back um, the first of next May, and we're going to do another one. It's going to be like two and a half days long, a full, a full blown uh, breaking the veil of silence. And he said, "Would you open this up to men because men need this as well?" Maybe you could call that lifting the veil of stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> there is a distinct difference between the way men and women yeah. view the world, yeah. and uh, most of us are just clueless about yeah. so many things. Absolutely. Uh, and and our uh, our 
lack of perception mm -hmm. is probably a little bit like this uh, veil of silence yeah. in some ways. Yeah. Well, I believe Father God is attracted to the hungry. He's atta attracted to the desperate. And it wasn't only the one with the issue of the blood or the Syrophoenician woman. The Syrophoenician woman says, hey, I'll eat the, the crumbs under the table. That's how hungry I am. It, yeah. But it was also the centurion whose, whose servant was, was sick. You know, that was a man. And, and these people were not Jews. They were outside of that circle of the Jewish culture. And they're coming after this man that, hey, you carry love. You carry things that we need and we want it. So it's not only women we see that were desperate and hungry. There were men that were desperate and hungry for yes. more of the things of God. You know, living life without Father God is not really the best way to live life. No. <laughs> God is indeed looking for men, women, who need a father, yeah. and he is the father of love. I think the scripture calls him the father of light. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And so if you don't know this father we're talking about, uh, it's not a difficult thing. Just ask Jesus to come into your life yeah. and uh, begin life with Father God. Yeah.